Let's welcome in today's roundtable. Brent Badowski, columnist at The Hill. His latest article is up on their website right now. Also, Pete Seats joining us, former White House spokesman for President George W. Bush. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Thank you. So as Miranda mentioned, a lot of Republicans woke up this morning, like a lot of people do in Las Vegas, with a hangover. But this one was induced by Donald Trump. Now, Pete, uh, he's three for his last three. What are the odds that you give him right now to become the GOP nominee? Well, the odds are in his favor, but he is about as inevitable as Hillary Clinton was in 2008, because we know anything can happen in politics. And the mere fact that he is the front runner at this moment is proof positive that anything can happen in politics. So I wouldn't say that this is a done deal by any stretch. Well, Brent, uh, you hear these Republicans today talking about uh, it's time to end this. Let's go ahead and put together a ticket, whether it be uh, Cruz and Rubio or Rubio and Kasich. Uh, do you really buy that they are panicking at this point or is this part of their message right now to try and get the, something together to build this firewall we've heard so much about? Oh, I think it's early in the game still. Trump, I agree with my colleague here, that Trump is clearly the front runner, but it's far from inevitable. Uh, my column in The Hill tomorrow is about the GOP as the party of fratricide. And my first sentence is, Honest Abe Lincoln must be rolling his eyes in heaven watching Ted Cruz and Donald Trump call each other liars, bad Christians, and, and unfit public servants. And that process has only begun. I would not write off Marco Rubio. I think he still has a shot. I think we'll see what happens between March the 1st and March the 15th, which I think is going to be the crucial time. Uh, but I, I give Trump credit for winning in Nevada, but I wouldn't give him too much credit when people say he's invincible. I do not agree with that at all. As a Democrat, I worry about Marco Rubio, mm -hmm. uh, although it's very possible that the Republican fratricide will try to destroy him, uh, which would be a terrible move for Republicans. But this thing is still wide open. It's not over by a long shot. Well, Fran Combs kind of disagrees with both of you. Uh, the managing editor of the Pollster Rasmussen Report says it might be time for the GOP to actually accept Trump as a nominee. He writes this today. <laughs> the more immediate question, however, has moved far beyond whether Trump can win the Republican nomination. The question now is whether he can be stopped Voters in a number of states will make that determination in the next two and a half weeks. Combs also makes the case for a Trump Kasich ticket. But journalist Lou Cannon, kind of on your side, disagrees with Combs. He says the fight isn't over yet. He makes the case for why Trump isn't the inevitable nominee in an article on Real Clear Politics. Cannon writes Trump's unfavorability ratings are sky high and says that, and these are his exact words, it's really silly to annoy Trump who has yet to be tested in a big state primary against a smaller field as a Republican nominee on the basis of a loss in Iowa and victories in New Hampshire and South Carolina. Plus, he says Trump uh, first needs to make it through Super Tuesday, then he has to get through the primaries in Florida, Texas, and Ohio, the three home states of his rivals. Let's start with you, Pete. I just want to get your analysis on this. If Trump, let's say if he were any other candidate, meaning part of the establishment, who has accomplished what he has so far, would the GOP be as reluctant as it's been to embracing, let alone endorsing him as the nominee? I think if he were any other candidate, likely everyone would be calling him the presumptive nominee because the media, pundits, everyone's always <clears throat> looking to what's next rather than letting the story play itself out. But being the nominee is irrelevant if you cannot win the general election. And let's play the game that Donald Trump likes to play and look at polls where he consistently, consistently loses in head to head matchups with Hillary Clinton across the country. But Marco Rubio consistently beats Hillary Clinton in those same head to head matchups. That's why this is not done and over with. If Republicans want to win the general election, Donald Trump is not the horse to ride to the White House because it doesn't look like he's going to be able to make it there. But what would it take for for you to change your mind? Like, what does Trump have to do? Well, he needs to turn back the clock on the past uh, nine, ten months of his campaign. I mean, he has not proven to me that he has the temperament or ability to be the commander in chief of this country and to represent us on the world stage. I think the damage has already been done. 
Brent, many uh, political pundits argue that Kasich is running, actually, to be vice president. Uh, what about what Coombs suggests and push for a Donald Trump and John Kasich ticket? Can you hear me, Brent? Oh, you're asking me? Yes. Uh, oh, I think, yeah, I, I think that uh, Kasich would be a better match with Marco Rubio than Donald Trump. Uh, with, with Trump, Kasich would be the odd couple, and that doesn't work as a presidential ticket. I agree entirely with what, uh, with what Pete just said about the general election, uh, that if you go to Real Clear Politics and look at their matchup polls, you will see that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton both beat uh, Donald Trump, in many cases by large margins. Uh, and I don't know that the Republicans really want to, to take that kind of a chance as people focus on it as they get closer to picking a nominee. Now, right now, I'm wearing a Donald Trump tie. <laughs> and, and, and it says, no, no, the label on it says, Hesh uh, Mano uh, Amano on China. What that means is this Donald Trump tie was made in China with a Spanish label. So maybe when he talks about making America great, uh, he wants to make China great or Mexico great. And that kind of question will be increasingly asked about him as he gets closer to the nomination. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. that people don't know about him, including Republicans, which right. they will soon be finding out. Let's hope. Uh, Brent and Pete, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to have you, gentlemen. Or actually, don't leave. Stick around. We still have much more to come. Hillary Clinton doubles down on her resistance to releasing the transcripts of her paid speeches. Now she claims she's being held to a different standard. Is it true? Our roundtable weighs in. Plus, we'll talk to Russ Carpell, CEO of Level Funded Health, about why Obamacare hurts small businesses. Well, in case you missed it last night during the Democratic town hall, Hillary Clinton claimed She's being held to a different standard than other presidential candidates. She is still refusing to release the transcripts of those paid speeches she gave to Goldman Sachs and other Wall Street firms. Clinton says she'll only do it if everyone, including Republicans, do the same. Clinton's come under fire recently from Bernie Sanders, who says she's getting nervous because voters are asking why Wall Street is giving millions of dollars to her super PAC. Well, last night, comedian Stephen Colbert gave Clinton a redo on that question about lying at the CNN Democratic Town Hall if she would like to change her answer to the American people. Will you lie is the home run of campaign questions. You just say no and then touch all the bases. <laughs> Funny guy, serious topic. Is that a question that you'd like another shot at answering? I'll just say no. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Well, is Hillary Clinton being held to a different standard than the rest of the presidential candidates. That was a great laugh. That was ha -ha. Very, very, very Not convincing. quite Hillary S. Uh, let's, uh, no, that's more ha ha ha. Like, I'll work on it. You could, yeah. Uh, let's just welcome back on our round table that I tried to say goodbye to earlier, but thanks for sticking around. Uh, Brent Badowski, the columnist at the Hill, and Pete Seed, former White House spokesperson for President George W. Bush. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with us. Uh, let's start with you, Pete. Is Hillary being held to a different standard? She says she is. Yeah, she's absolutely right. Uh, her and her husband, scandal after scandal, have gotten away scot-free each and every time. So yeah, you're darn right they're held to a different standard. These scandals would have taken down most anyone else, yet they're able to ride high and she's able to be this close to being the nominee of the Democratic Party. So absolutely she's held to a different standard. Brent, what's your reaction to that? Because she's saying that all Republican candidates should also release their transcripts from talking to financial institutions. She said she'll release hers if they release theirs. And she feels she's... Well, I put it a little bit differently than, okay. than Pete did, but I come out in the same place. Uh, now, the problem that she has is, is he does have an image problem with not being forthcoming and not telling it like it is. She does sometimes act as though she wants to be exempt from some of the rules that apply to a lot of other people. Uh, she should release the transcripts. She should have released them a long time ago. They will come out one way or the other. Uh, I know that there are uh, certainly one tape that I know for a fact is circulating in her voice on audio about these speeches. And every time she gives these answers, well, I'll give it, I'll release them. And then, then Bernie says, well, okay, fine. I'll release mine for my $500 speech. And then Hillary says, well, no, the Republicans have to release them, too. Uh, that is part of her Stephen Colbert problem. She just yeah. should release yeah. the darn things and move on. 
Yeah, right. it, it, and this goes back to, to another problem that Hillary Clinton has, and that's accessibility with the media. She's running for president of the United States. We mentioned earlier today that Bernie Sanders held a news conference today, but Hillary Clinton has not done that since December. That is a standard I think she's being held to here. If you mm -hmm. want to run for president, you need to get out there. You need to do the rope line, take some questions from the media. She refuses to do that. So the press, of course, they get boxed in, they get cagey, they want to ask her some questions. That's the standard I think she's being held to. Pete, do you think that's part of the problem here, that she doesn't answer any questions when it comes to the media? Yeah, she plays by a completely different set of rules. It, this reminds me of Mitt Romney in 2012, where he refused for months and months and months to release his tax returns, which allowed the story to build up. And regardless of what he did in the end, it, the die was cast, and that's what's happening here. Hillary Clinton just needs to own it. She needs to own who she is. Stop trying to be someone else because she gets called out on it time and time again, and that's why Bernie Sanders is is able to be nipping at her heels the way he is, is because he's able to effectively call her out on her hypocrisy. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it seems like she just the story would end if she just said, here you go, I'd like to see everyone else do it now too. Well, even though all this is going on, she's still, you know, pretty much a lock to win the Democratic nomination. You just wonder how much damage is being done at this stage during the primary uh, that the RNC is, is just filing away, filing away. And unless there's uh, some sort of indictment or if there's subpoenas issued mm -hmm. and the email scandal really gets blown up, I mean, she's going to pretty much walk away with a huge victory in South Carolina. At least that's what the conventional wisdom is. And after that, it doesn't seem like Bernie Sanders can really stop her anywhere. But she's going to emerge from the Democratic primary brand pretty damaged. Do you agree? Oh, I think uh, it, more damaged than she should be, left to her own devices. Right, and a lot of it's uh, her I did own a fault. Column right. about, uh, I did a column about six months ago that was only half tongue-in-cheek, and, and I have reason to believe that Hillary read this column. And I said, if I had one wish from the political gods for Hillary Clinton, that she would meet me at a corner table at the bar at the Ritz-Carlton one night with two bottles of Jack Daniels, and by the second bottle of Jack Daniels, I would say, Hillary, tell me what you really think. Tell me what you really believe. Tell me what your dreams are and your hopes are. And whatever she told me then is how she should campaign. Yeah, I might take three bottles of Jack Daniels, Brent. I don't know if two will do it. <laughs> Maybe that's what inspired that whole four, bar scene okay. at SNL, remember? Maybe, Maybe that's, that's, what that's what it was, Brent. It was because of your, your article. That's, that's what did it. All yeah, right, Brent. Actually. <laughs> and Brent Vidalski, Pete C. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Pleasure to have you. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk to a guy named Russ Carpell, who is the CEO of Level Funded Health. He's going to give us some insight about why Obamacare is hurting small businesses, all that and much more when Newsmax now returns. Plus, we have the results of our poll question we asked you yesterday. Do you think terrorists are using the military prison at Guantanamo Bay? To recruit new extremists. We'll have the final results plus some of your comments coming up in just a few moments.